Hello, Ray Stewart here with an introduction to using iNaturalist for the Ohio Vernal Pool Network. I'd like to begin uh, with what you can do to get started before you go out into the field. So you need to collect a few things to take with you. First thing you're going to want is a smartphone. So if you've got one of these, this is wonderful. It makes the work so much easier. Uh, you download the iNaturalist app onto your phone. You make sure that you have an account set up and it is ready to go. That will save you a lot of trouble. You can uh, take pictures with this, you can do sound recordings with your phone, and you can submit your observations uh, directly from your phone without any intermediate step. Now if you don't have a smartphone, uh, if you would rather make observations using a camera or with a sound recorder, uh, that's perfectly fine too. And then uh, another step involved when you get to a computer, then you can transfer those files and upload those to your iNaturalist account, uh, making sure uh, to designate the Ohio Vernal Pool Network project on iNaturalist. And then it will be as a, a contributing to our project. Another thing that you're going to want, um, we want air temperature and water temperature recorded. And there's a little form uh, when you submit your observation to include that. I like to use this infrared thermometer. It's quick and easy. You, all you have to do is point and click and it will read out uh, your temperature on the little screen here. Uh, these are not terribly expensive. Uh, make sure that you calibrate it for Celsius because we want uh, all of our data to be in metric. I also highly recommend that you have a pair of boots to wear out into the field. Something like these muck boots uh, are very handy, uh, work well in most circumstances. However, they might not be tall enough for every vernal pool out there. So, in some occasions, I prefer to go out with these hip waders. Uh, they come up to my hip and uh, well over my knee. I'm very secure. Unlikely that I'm going to get into water any deeper uh, than these hip waders will cover. So one or the other, uh, but be careful either way because um, you don't want to be walking out of the vernal pool with a boot full of water. In addition, for taking samples of macroinvertebrates in the water itself, it is handy to have a dip net. One of our target species is fairy shrimp, and they can be hard to see sometimes, but if you use a dip net like this, you can sweep this through the water covering a fair amount of territory, and then uh, see what it is that has come up in your net. I like to take a little tub along with me uh, because then I can sweep with the dip net and knock it into the tub and I can see what it is uh, that I swept up with the net. In addition, we want to have a measurement of how deep the water is in the vernal pool. So part of that is to seek out um, where it may be the deepest, and then take a depth there. If, uh, if not, uh, at least wherever it is that you are sampling and making observations, uh, measure the depth of the vernal pool there. And that can be done if you take a ruler along with you. Again, make sure that it is calibrated in metric, so a meter stick would be very handy. But I have another choice that I make. I've taken the handle of my dip net and I've calibrated it in metric measurements. I have a, a line that I have put on here and marks uh, indicating every tenth of a meter. I can use that to estimate the depth of the water that I'm in and then report that in centimeters. So if I know that I'm up to three decimeters and about halfway to the next, that's 3.5 decimeters, also known as 35 centimeters. It's not that hard.
I'm marking my dip net as a meter stick so that I can use this to measure the depth of the water that I'm standing in. And I'm going to burn a mark at every one-tenth of a meter along here. Uh, you may want to take some kind of field guide with you to help identify what it is that you are seeing in the field. I recommend Ohio's Hidden Wonders, a guide to the plants and animals of vernal pools, available only from Ohio Wetlands Association. And also, uh, before you go out, you want to make sure that your equipment is clean and disinfected. So that means uh, your dip net um, should be cleaned, uh, not just rinsed off, which is a good start, but you want to disinfect it. So I use a solution, uh, a dilute solution of household laundry Clorox and water in a ratio of 32 to 1. Now this tall kitchen garbage uh, can um, I've got six gallons of water in that. So that means three cups of Clorox uh, go in that. And that will give you the right ratio to disinfect. And you should, I don't want to hit the ceiling with this, you should get the whole thing wet and soaked. Yes, there. And soaked. And then when you pull it out, oh, that is low ceiling. You should leave the Clorox solution on there for five minutes before you rinse it off. I know it might be a little smelly, but uh, that will make sure that it is disinfected. You don't want to just rinse it off right away. Also, uh, boots. And for sure, you want to make sure uh, that you're scrubbing any old mud off of that. Um, get seeds off of it if they're stuck on there, uh, clean that off, and then follow the same procedure where you can just dip in Clorox, dilute Clorox solution, and then let it stay on there for about five minutes. And that will make sure that you're not spreading disease from uh, one wetland to another. Collect four data points. When you first get out to the field, first assess the size of the vernal pool you're about to monitor. Walk its perimeter. Figure out where the extent of the vernal pool is. Then, to the best of your ability, determine the order of magnitude of size of that vernal pool using these images as guidelines. Of course, if you have a more precise way of measuring the area of your vernal pool, you're welcome to submit that data instead. So while I'm in the pool sampling, I can easily take the depth of the water here uh, with my calibrated dip net and putting it in right here. I know it's pretty deep. Glad I've got the hip waders on. And it goes up to this mark right here, which is woo, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths of a meter deep. So there's one data point right there. 
I know how deep it is. Now, there's ice here. I could guess how cold it is, uh, but I will uh, use my infrared thermometer to actually take the measurement of the water temperature. And I, I want to make sure that I've stirred up the water a little bit so that I'm getting an average of the temperature of the water because it can be different temperatures whether it's up near the ice or down at the bottom. So with that, I can click and read the temperature there. I also want the air temperature, which I can do easily by going to uh, uh, any weather report. Uh, but I can also find some surface that is in the shade and take that temperature, and that should be identical uh, with the air temperature. So I've got that right over here. And there we go, it's only two degrees warmer in the air than it is in the water. And that's it. All right, when you're monitoring a vernal pool, one of the first things you want to know is, is it a vernal pool? And one of the ways to know that is, does it dry down at some time, usually during the summer, and lose all of its water? Well, that can be hard to tell if you're just visiting it for the first time and it's full of water. So there are other indicators of a vernal pool. And one of them is that you don't have fish in the water because fish don't survive well when it dries down. Uh, but you may not be able to see that there is an absence of fish. So you got to look for other indicators too. And one of them right behind me here is this bush. It's called button bush. Uh, it loves being in the water and is often found, often found in, uh, in vernal pools and is an indicator that you've probably got a long hydro period uh, pool of some kind and um, that's one of the things to check for. So if you're documenting for iNaturalist, snap a picture of a button bush in your vernal pool and that will be a strong indicator that you do have a vernal pool. Other things that you might want to look for, in the water, um, using a dip net, uh, if you find uh, a macroinvertebrate called fairy shrimp, excellent indicator that you have a vernal pool. So if you've got one of those, if one of those comes up in your net, or if you can just see it swimming in the water, then document that. And you've got a good, uh, verifiable vernal pool because they don't live anywhere else. Okay. Spotted salamanders use vernal pools to breed for just a few days or possibly a few weeks in late winter to early spring. They lay eggs and then go back into the forest where they remain mostly unseen for the rest of the year. Wood frogs are one of the first amphibians to breed in vernal pools. They are explosive breeders. They come in all at once, stay for just a few days, lay their eggs, and then they are gone to be out into the forest again. Eggs remain for several weeks uh, before they hatch into tadpoles.